Hello, I'm Laura Chevalier, and I'm a Developer Relations Engineer on the Google Ads API. In this video, I'm going to walk through the high-level usage flow for enhanced conversions for leads in the Google Ads API. If you find this video useful, please let us know with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for future videos. Now let's get started. First, a reminder to implement the prerequisites before getting started on your implementation. If you watched the introduction video, you already know about the prerequisites, which include creating and upload clicks conversion action, accepting the customer data terms and opting in to enhance conversions for leads, and configuring tagging on your website. Once you've implemented the prerequisites, you're all set up to collect and send to Google Ads the information that users submit when they fill out the lead form on your website. With Enhanced Conversions for Leads, you send offline lead conversion data directly and securely from your CRM to Google Ads through the API so that Google can tie those conversions back to the ad that drove the lead. As a result, Google Ads can report on your offline lead conversions without you needing to store the Google Click ID in your CRM. With that, the first step to upload Enhanced Conversions for Leads is to normalize and hash your first-party user identifiers, which can include email address and phone number. If you don't properly normalize and hash the user data before sending it to the Google Ads API, you won't necessarily see errors in your response. Instead, the upload could succeed, but Google Ads won't find a match for the data you uploaded, leading to fewer reported conversions. For that reason, this step is especially important to get right. The next step is to create a click conversion object for each lead conversion. The normalized and hashed user data goes in the user identifiers field of the conversion with a separate user identifier object for each identifier. As a best practice, to increase the chances of finding a match for the user, include as many identifiers as you have for the user. If you have the gclit available, you can include that in the conversion as well for optimal measurement. Google Ads uses the hashed identifiers you provide to look up the gclit associated with the conversion and further uses them to look up ad clicks and views from Google signed-in users to improve conversion attribution. Ultimately, this means improved performance from more accurate campaign reporting and an overall increase in conversions. Now, going back to our click conversion, you'll also need to set conversion action to the resource name of an enabled upload clicks conversion action, the same one that you set up when you went through the prerequisites. If you're not sure how to create or find the conversion action, check out our intro video to learn more. There are some additional fields you can set on the click conversion to provide more information about the conversion. One is the consent field, which was added in v15 of the API. Check the guide for the latest information regarding consent. You may also set order ID, which uniquely identifies a transaction, or conversion date time, which must be after the click time associated with the gclid. Refer to the reference docs linked in the video description for a complete list of click conversion fields. Now that our click conversion is ready, the next step is to send it to the API through the conversion upload service. If you have multiple conversions to upload, combine the operations into a single upload click conversions request for optimal efficiency. Make sure that you upload to your Google Ads conversion customer and set partial failure to true. These are required for all conversion uploads, not just enhanced conversions for leads. Note that setting partial failure means any errors are returned in the partial failure error field of the API response. Lastly, review your uploads. When you're just setting up your enhanced conversions for leads integration, be sure to investigate and address any errors that came up in the partial failure error field. Once you've addressed any errors and completed your integration, review your uploads by querying for the latest offline data diagnostics report. If anything looks amiss, our troubleshooting guide can help you sort through issues. Before we wrap up, a few best practices for using enhanced conversions for leads. As I mentioned, you should include multiple user identifiers for a single user if you have them, combine multiple click conversion objects in a single upload, and review partial failure errors while implementing your enhanced conversions for leads integration. In addition, we recommend uploading all available offline conversion events, even if they didn't come from Google Ads, to ensure full and accurate conversion reporting. Note that any clicks that didn't come from Google Ads will produce a click not found warning in the offline data diagnostics report, which is expected and can be avoided by setting the debug enabled field of the upload request to false. 
Lastly, don't set external attribution data on the click conversion or specify a conversion action that uses an external attribution model. These allow you to specify the portion of a conversion to attribute to Google Ads, but they aren't supported for enhanced conversions for leads. That's it for the enhanced conversions for leads usage flow. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.